Hello YouTube, welcome back to the shop. On this episode of What's In Yours, we will be going over some basics of the speed controller. We will try to make sense of the wiring inside the deck of the scooter. We will go over some basic wiring troubleshooting. And then we also will be going over some basics if you were thinking about adding additional lighting to your scooter. So let's get started. All right folks, first thing we're gonna go over is your controller your speed controller. So my, my speed controllers are mounted on the outside of my scooter to make room for the battery. Um, and so basically what a speed controller is, is the brains of the operation. So this is going to get powered up by your battery and then it's going to send that DC voltage to the different components in your scooter and um, operate it. So the wiring that you see inside a scooter to a lot of people can be very intimidating. But what you got to remember is you on the wiring basics, you got to take it one step at a time and trace those wires out. And once you get used to it and follow where all the wires go, um, it helps you build confidence on troubleshooting your scooter later on in the future. If you have an led light that goes out or something of that nature. And so these speed controllers um, have transformers and MOSFETs and capacitors and stuff like that to regulate the voltage. Um, and you can easily find these on eBay or Alibaba or whatever the case may be. Um, you just got to make sure the rating of the controller is the same rating um, as the current one you have in there. Uh, because uh, so say, for instance, uh, this is a JMP controller, which is a very popular controller. They um, uh, they make a lot of them, and they're easy to find. But you need to look at the specs on the controller. So in my particular case, on this scooter, I have a 60 volt scooter, and um, it runs all the way up to 37 amps. Now I'm assuming that the motors on this scooter probably run at somewhere to 34 to 35 amps. They give a little extra, at least in um, NAND robots history, they they give a little extra. So, you know, when you're climbing hills and stuff like that, you don't over amp your controller. And these get pretty warm. Um, I like the fact that they're on the outside of the scooter, but I don't like the fact that they're a little bit more exposed to the elements because it's not sealed with this box that it goes in. So I might be working on something to seal that up a little bit better, but I need to be able to remove it if I ever need to do any uh, troubleshooting. So, and, and these controllers, I mean, they run anywhere from, you know, 10 bucks all the way up to 150 bucks. Uh, and on the dual motors, you'll usually have like an A and B uh, controller. Uh, there'll be a wire running to both of them uh, so they can talk to each other and operate uh, between each other. And so um, that's, that's a very important component of your scooter. If it starts going out on the blink or whatever, it, it could cause a lot of problems. Um, but also too, when, when you're looking for these controllers, you know, you're looking for the specs, but you kind of want to match up the um, uh, wiring colors um, or if they're labeled really well. So like in this, for, for my NAND robot, none of the wires are labeled. So I got to figure out Hey, where all of these wires go, where do they land, and what do they go to? It's also a good idea, too, before you get to messing around <clears throat> in these scooters to always disconnect your batteries. <laughs> um, if you're troubleshooting across uh, some of the terminals, um, it's easy to short them out between the two, and then you're in a place replacing a connector. Uh, getting or practicing with your soldering skills. Um, if you're wanting to get into troubleshooting your own scooter and adding things to it, it's something you can practice and maybe you want to practice often and, um, and get better at it before you start trying to uh, solder wires inside the scooter. Um, but it's, some, it's a technique that can be mastered fairly quickly and, um, and it'll help you build confidence on adding stuff to the scooter when you want to. Now, one thing I noticed about this scooter and one thing that we're going to be doing, and um, there's a lot of scooters out here that have the controllers on the outside, is one thing that I noticed is if you see this hole right here, um, there's kind of sharp edges on here. 
And one thing that concerns me is over time with going off-roading and bouncing around, these wires eventually get chafed and maybe possibly cause a short. So um, I'm going to be adding a rubber grommet. And so I'm going to be doing that. Uh, I got a rubber grommet kit off of Amazon. I'll put the link below if you want to check it out. But basically, um, it has all these different sizes of grommets um, in here. And they have these little slits that fit between the metal and stay in there pretty securely. And so you just got to find one that fits the hole. And so in my case, it's going to be these uh, three quarter inch grommets right here. And so instead of having to unhook the entire controller, um, what I do is I just make a little split, cut a little split in the, uh, in the grommet. And then I just add it just fit it right on up in there. Just like that, hopefully you can see that. Okay, now that gives me a little bit of peace of mind and confidence that bouncing around on this thing, um, these wires aren't gonna chase, uh, chafe and uh, cause a short. So I'm going to go ahead and add another one to the other side. So basically, I just take the grommet, I cut it, and then I just fit it in there. All right, all done with that. Hopefully, you can see that nice and clean. And don't have to worry about chafing on that either. All right, so let's go over some basic wire troubleshooting and chase some of these wires down. Now, once you get into this thing and you, you start following where the wires go, it's actually fairly simple, the way these way they have these things wired up. Um, of course, you know, like I said, everything goes through the um, controller and it's connected to the battery. Once it's connected to the battery, it passes that power through everything in here. So let's, uh, a lot of this wiring in here, believe it or not, is for the lighting. And if you just pick up the lighting, on this thing and you just follow it. So I got some LEDs in the back, some LEDs on the side and some LEDs in the front. And then of course, I got the ones on the very front of the scooter, the headlights. But if you follow that, it's, it's mainly most of your wiring in this whole entire thing. And so um, what you have here is of course, the, you have to have a way to take um, 60 volts of DC power and reduce it down to whatever the voltage of the, of the lighting is. So you can get different lighting for these, let's say six volt, 10 volt, 12 volt lighting. Because remember in the old days when you just had the lead acid batteries, they were 12 volts, you just hooked it up to it and you called it a day. But with this LED lighting, it needs a different type of voltage. And so how they do that is with these DC to DC uh, voltage, um, What's what do they call them? DC to DC voltage reducers, and you can find these on eBay and a lot of places. And, and um, some of them are adjustable. Uh, those ones are a little bit more expensive, but these things go for like five or ten bucks. Um, and the adjustable ones are nice because you can take pretty much a lot of different voltages, and they have a little pot. We call it a pot switch, but it's called a potentiometer switch, and you can dial that in to whatever voltage lights. So. I'll give you an example. The voltage coming in to my back LED lights are 60 volts, okay? Well, if you try to put 60 volts on a six volt LED light, it's gonna short it out because it's too much current. So what they do is take these DC to DC uh, voltage converters and they solder on the wiring to one side and it has a little transformer and a couple little chips in there and it reduces the volt reduces the voltage down to a working voltage so we would consider this the primary side with the voltage coming in and this the secondary side and then so that reduces the voltage down to six volts which is a working volt voltage and powers on the led lights um so th they have a couple of these in here uh for that to run the lights. Here's another one right here. So, so if you're thinking about doing a lighting project, um, it's basically 
you, you find the voltage of L LED lights. So let, let's say I wanted to upgrade my back LED lights to say 12 volts. So I'd find that DC to DC voltage um, reducer and um, one, so I would find one that's 60 volts to 12 volts. And then I would remove those lights, remove this, solder the new ones on, and even some of them come with um, wires already attached with these connectors. So th those are pretty nice. They're a little bit more pricier. They're about 10 bucks, you know, 12, 15 bucks a piece. But you can turn the voltage whatever you want. So you're gonna have your 60 volt voltage coming in and I added 12 volts lights to the back because maybe I want my uh, red LED lights in the back to be a little bit brighter. So um, I would do that and just run the wires uh, for that. So that, that's a fairly simple upgrade. And then also too, in my particular scooter, they had a um, extra um, connector. And I want to say that connector, uh, is possibly for an alarm but of course I don't have the schematics for it but it, I think it's in a uh, alarm or you know what for this it's just an extra connector for lights so maybe there's some other type of lights that they add to the scooter but I basically get a, another connector added to here and let's say the lights I had were uh, 24 volts um, I could take put another connector here, add one of those DC to DC converters, and then solder on my wires for the 24 volts, and boom, now I've got extra lighting on the scooter because I, I think lighting on the scooter is pretty cool. So that's one, a couple ways you can do it um, for adding extra lighting onto your scooter. So let, going back in, going back to the, um, to the wiring mess in here, but so you got your lighting, um, most, most of these DC motors are color coded the same with the yellow, green, and the blue. Um, and they're three phase motors. So those come directly out of the controller, uh, through this distribution power block, whatever you want to call it, and then go to the motors. Now in my particular, uh, scooter, these motors have five hall sensors. And typically the way you can tell how many hall sensors you have in your scooter is by counting the wires that are coming back from the scooter. So in my case, I have five in the front and five in the back. Uh, you could have three, uh, I, you know, just, it just depends what, what size that scooter is, or maybe most of them all have five um, hall sensors. Now where that comes into play, because in your controller, there's typically a uh, setting in there for how many hall sensors you have. And you can reduce or add the number of that into, or increase or decrease the number of that in the controller, and that's gonna affect your speed. Because basically, hall sensors are just these little, uh, um, like microchips that um, sense the magnetic field inside the motor, and um, that's what gives you your speed, or uh, reads your speed. So um, if, if your controller comes and, and let's say it says 14 uh, on the number on the controller with your uh, hall sensors. Well, you can reduce that down to make sure you have the right number in your controller so you know that speed's taken care of. These, uh, these JMP controllers come with the NAND robot, uh, kind of notorious for not reading speed accurately, and we always got to go by the GPS. So having your hall sensor right are uh, the first thing, and then a lot of times you're going to have to decrease your tire size um, to get to for your speed to read what your the controller to read your GPS speed correctly. Now, I think that affects your mileage. I haven't tested it yet, and that's one thing I'm going to do. But um, or, or your range. So let's say I had 14 hall cents, or uh, I reduced my tire size. Let's say down to from 11 to seven that might mess with my actual you know mile mark so if you go from point a to point b and that's exactly a mile and you're increasing and decreasing your tire sizes you might get different readings if you test it from point a to point b every single time so trying to dial all that in is a little tricky but hopefully this gives you uh, a little bit of an idea of how to um, make that a little bit more accurate so that's 
how, how you do some of that. Now let's go over some of more of this wiring as well. And so we're just going to follow it up. So this, they have these two connectors. These are for the wires, uh, uh, for the hall sensors and for the motors. And then all of the, a lot of that goes up back to the controller. And usually it's a five or six pin connector inside the back of that controller. Um, you know, for your, for your different settings, voltage readings, uh, throttle, all that stuff. But most of this wiring coming out of here, if you just follow it, a lot of it's going for the lighting. So, uh, for the lighting. So my point is don't, don't get intimidated by all this wiring that's sitting in here. It's, it's a fairly simple thing to figure out if you just sit down and take the time to do it. Um, and, and then that's going to help you eliminate problems in the future. You know, if you have a short and it's a good, good thing to come in here and check these connectors, um, every once in a while as well. So that's it for the basic, uh, uh, let me add on to that. So to find out what your voltage is on this connector, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get a voltmeter. A lot of you know this, maybe some of you don't. Hopefully some of this content will, you will find it helpful, but you'll have to get a meter like this or similar. And um, even the cheap ones, they do okay. Fluke's a really good brand, but you'll see all these different symbols on the voltmeter. And um, the straight line with the dots underneath there is always your DC. So um, when you're dealing with batteries, you're always dealing with DC voltage. So basically, you're going to turn that to DC voltage. You're going to take your meter leads. And then you're going to carefully touch them to the um, connector, the two metal connectors inside here. And you're going to read your voltage. And that's how you know how much voltage you have coming in and then how much you know you need coming out so for example again with the lights i can't i can't throw 60 volts to 6 volt led lights so i'm going to check my voltage here if it's 60 volts i'm going to attach that to one of these dc to dc converters and then and that will be my primary side my incoming side and then my secondary side um i'll solder the wires onto that and that will reduce the voltage um, for whatever LED lights I want to add on. So having a really good quality meter is important to uh, troubleshoot a lot of that. So that's basically it on the uh, wiring and troubleshooting part of that. So if you have any questions, leave it down in the comment. And uh, hopefully uh, you find some information in this video very helpful. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And please like, subscribe, uh, share, and hit the bell notification button. And until next time, ride safe.